Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Learn From Us podcast. As always, with your pal, Paul. Paul, how are you? I'm your man, Seth. Of course, <laughs> I'm wearing this amazing jacket because our guests last time. Now, Jameson, you're dressed down today. Jameson Reeves yes. owns Full Grip Games, a gaming store in downtown Akron. And when we had him in the studio a few podcasts a few months ago, he was dressed like a French pimp. So I thought I'd want to level up and put on my, my <laughs> jacket. And sure enough, he's wearing very games. And how are you? Welcome to the show. Thanks for being on. I'm fantastic. Thank you for having me, guys, again. I, I really appreciate uh, coming back. Can I um, make a comment? Go ahead, Paul. I just Googled Freddie Mercury outfit for Live Aid, and this is what popped up. I'm going to share the screen. <laughs> Uh-oh. No, maybe it's not Live Aid. Check, uh, check, uh, <laughs> check another one. Uh, w- Wembley Stadium, Paul. Wembley's where Live Aid was. Well, he, they played it twice, and he changes <laughs> outfits much <laughs> like I will during this podcast, Paul. So, listen. <laughs> All right, I'll give, I'll give you that. Let's move on. But Let's I just cut right say- to the chase. So, I had um, we had Jameis into the podcast a few months ago because um, Paul has said on the podcast many times, on the Learn From Us podcast, subscribe below on YouTube, please. Um, Paul has said that he's enamored with the idea of business building, obviously, and entrepreneurship, but he's more in love with someone who built a business from the ground up than someone who has handed a multi-million dollar business from their daddy. And so um, we tend to have small business owners on here who can, who can teach us, we can learn from, and can inspire us. And so we had Jameson on a few months ago. And again, I don't think I said that, by the way, but go ahead. Well, go screw yourself, Paul. Then I'm just <laughs> making up words, but maybe that's what I want to do. But, um, but regardless, <laughs> but regardless <laughs> I'm on fire today. It's Friday. Yeah, it's like, it's like, I, I don't, like, I, Paul, like, I always like to say whether you're selling bottled water or magic cards or used cars, <laughs> um, there's a business sense to this that we can learn from. And it seems like Jameson has been doing really well. In the past. Now, let me let me set this up even more, Jameson. So yeah. I called you about a week and a half ago because I had been reading, obviously during during the COVID, the Kung Flu, as Paul calls it, um, <laughs> during the COVID, um, there has been a lot of businesses who are closing up shop, Paul. I mean, uh, obviously, upwards of 150,000 restaurants across the nation are not coming back. Um, here in Ohio alone, Paul, did you hear that Brio and Bravo are not coming back at all? They're gone forever. And so I, I won't, oh, I didn't hear that. I won't discuss what I've heard, but I, I believe there's an investor group out there who's interested in buying it. Ah, okay. Well, they make great food. But regardless, um, tons of layoffs. So I was starting to see that, like the economy, a collector of trading card games and gaming shops who um, probably run on a fairly tight budget, uh, like most businesses, are starting to, um, no pun intended, close up shop. Um, and so... Uh, I was like, I better call Jameson because I'm worried. And I, I shouldn't have been because I called Jameson. I'll let you, James, I'll let you go on and say what you told me. But basically, it, it sounds like you're doing really great and you're going to go into that. Yes. But the key yes. to this, Jameson, is I then called Paul and I said, I talked to Jameson. And Paul got like the, he got ready yeah. for like a huge, <laughs> you know, he got prepared for like a hell yeah. And I said, he's doing phenomenal. And Paul just gives me one of these like, yes, you know, so <laughs> he was very fired up to hear what's been Good. going on in your life and how you've been succeeding, especially through these hard times. So welcome to the show. Tell us Thank you. a little bit bef- uh, for first time listeners, tell us a little bit about yourself and your, and your business, just uh, yep. maybe a quick wrap and we'll get into what's been happening the last couple months. You got it. <clears throat> well, a little bit about myself. I, uh, I was a banker for 12 years before I got into this industry. Um, this was just kind of a hobby that, that I did when I was a kid. Picked it up again uh, just for fun, like, say, eight to 10 years ago, uh, playing, playing Magic the Gathering, you know, just the, the card game. And then um, got pulled into a business in Chicago uh, where we started an online business. Then we started a retail business. Part of ways with my business partner there. And then I decided that I want to move back to Ohio. Didn't want to go back to banking, wanted to stay in this industry. So then uh, started the online business in uh, my basement, in my townhouse. About six months later, then I opened a retail location, moves, you know, the operations from my basement uh, in my house to the, to the retail location. And um, what, we, what we do as well with the cards, we're, uh, we're actually a vendor that we go to large tournaments that are held for this specific game. Uh, and then we also got into Pokemon, which we do the same thing. We're a vendor. We travel around the United States to large tournaments for the game. So, uh, we set up. Uh, a booth. We buy, sell, and trade the cards at those events, bring those cards back home, list them online, sell them, and, and ship them out, and then also sell them in, in our retail location. So, 
So, Paul, as early as just yesterday, I called Jameson for some uh, investor advice because I have a I had a friend in Colorado who has a a fourteen thousand dollar box of magic that he wanted to trade and blah blah blah. So, like, we're not talking about chump change here. And Jameson gave me some great advice of that. But, um, Paul, tell me real quick. So we've had Jameson on. Go back a few podcasts if you want to listen to our first his first appearance. But Paul, tell me why you were so fired up to hear that Jameson was doing well, especially in these bad times. I think it was just more because of like Jameson and who he is and he was a nice guy and all that stuff. And who would have thought that, that Magic the Gathering cards would be this business that's exploding during this time. Because I was worried about your retail location because I know you said you had a lot of tournaments at your spot. So I was like, oh, mm-hmm. shit, what's going on with that? But, right. you know, listen, that's great. Good for you. And uh, that's why I was pumped up. I just like it when, you know, I don't know. I don't want to be cheesy about it, but I just like it when uh, small businesses do well. Yeah, so Jameson, talk about what, what has been going, don- going on in your – I almost said dong, Paul. What has been going dong? Uh, what has been going on in your, your business the last six weeks? How have you transformed from being an open business where gamers come and play all the time to obviously mm-hmm. being closed? And what, what is the transformation you guys have gone through to stay, stay awesome? That, that's a great question. And to be honest, I mean, we really set ourselves up prior, prior to all of this happening um, for us to be able to be successful dur- during this time. I mean, the mainstay of our business really is online. We're really an online business, right? The, the retail side of it certainly is important. We care about our customers. We care about the community. You know, we want to provide a, a safe space and a, and a nice space that, you know, local people can, can come in and, and experience, you know, what, what we provide. Well, in, in the meantime, we, we're still always very, very focused on our online uh, presence, our online business, what we're providing to people, you know, the, in, in that avenue. So really, uh, when, everything, when everything happened, we did have to shut down the re- retail location. Obviously, you know, we want to social distance and, you know, keep people safe and, you know, um, abide by the, the rules and regulations of what's being recommended. So, um, you know, we've, we've definitely lost a source of revenue in, in that regards. Um, what, what we kind of decided to do was obviously, you know, uh, rely on our strengths and really, really focus and hammer home on the online business. Um, there's a couple, there's a couple things that I did right away that not necessarily happy about, or not necessarily a practice that I would employ in a normal circumstance. Uh, two, the two things are a, we loaded all of our back stocks. So we typically keep a separate back stock for, of cards for Pokemon and magic for just the retail location. So I went ahead and made the decision. We're going to pull, we're going to pull those back stocks. We're going to pull those cards and we're going to list everything online. Okay. Now we're definitely on the back end. Like when, once things open up, we're going to, you know, have to then accumulate more cards that we're just going to have for the store. But for right now, it's all hands on deck. Right. So that was the first, that was the first thing that we did. And then also what I've been doing, and I'm not really broadcasting this, but we, we went ahead and actually did a 10% discount of all of our online uh, inventory. So all of, so we're selling on Amazon, we're selling on our direct website. And then we're, we're also selling on this other website called PCG player. Uh, and actually, on our direct website, we're not doing the discount, but on Amazon and TCG Player, we're running a 10% discount, and we have been for weeks, which typically, again, just from a margin standpoint, I don't really want to do that because margins are tight, expenses are high, like we need to try to make as much as we can. But during this time, I want to make sure that we're A, in line with market, or beating the market in regards to, to pricing, um, because the, really the two things, and I, I mean, you guys probably know this too, um, with business. Inventory and pricing are really going to be the two the, the two things that drive that drive your business, especially especially in retail. Do you do you have the selection that people want, right? So if you, if you do, then what does your price look like? Right? You know, I mean, obviously customer service is going to fall somewhere in there, but during this time, I think people are, are really price conscious, right? So those two decisions, I think, were were very pivotal in regards to us being able to get the sales quick enough right? Because time is a factor here. Like you want to operate as, as swiftly as possible. You know, you don't want to, you know, rest on your laurels and be like, yeah, I'm going to, you know, maybe I'll do this in a week or two. Well, that week or two, you know, I've been able to accumulate X amount of sales that I wouldn't have gotten if I hadn't made the decisions that, that we made right, right away. So I think those are, you know, those are really the two big talking points for me that, that has made us really successful. And then just the fact that, you know, I'm working six, seven days a week, you know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not stopping. I understand that this right now, this is a very crucial time to be very focused on everything that I need to do, you know, from a, from a production standpoint, from a leadership standpoint, you know, um, to, to keep this thing, to keep this thing going and, and, and flourishing. And just to, just to share numbers with you guys too. Um, All those numbers, keep going. 
All right. So before, before we loaded everything online, I think I had maybe probably about five, about $500,000 worth of retail inventory listed online. And right now we have about, and this is down from our sales. So um, at our peak, we had about 715 or $720,000 worth of inventory listed. So we listed a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of extra inventory. Right now we're sitting at about $660,000 worth of inventory um, now up from about 500 to, you know, between 500 and 525 bef before, you know, everything happened. And then our typical sales online range anywhere from maybe about $90,000 a month to, you know, upwards of $110,000 a month. And right now we're at, for the past 30 days, $125,000 in sales. Oh, wow. So, so my last two days back to back. Now there's, there's a combination of things that happen to, to make, to make these numbers occur. Uh, but my back to back days are, $10,200 in sales. And then yesterday I was at $9,700 in sales. Uh, Paul, today what I'm already you, at 2700 Paul, I got to cut you off, Jimmy. Paul, what do you yep. think of these numbers? It's awesome. I mean, I'm just surprised that that many people are online active buying. I mean, that's great. That's good. That's great to hear. Jameson, yeah. tell me, um, before you go on, tell me this. You know, I had been finding obviously trends with, with buying is mirroring the economy. You know, a lot of people are saying that some of these higher end cards automatically start dropping 25, 35%. How are you seeing that drop and yet at the same time increasing sales? That's a great question. Um, it's a caveat. So I'm going to separate that into two categories and it's really going to be magic and Pokemon. Okay. Okay. So there was already a trend occurring in magic that was causing this to happen. Okay. So yes, the high end collectibles, the, the values are, are dropping. Um, you know, long-term, I can't give you a projection of where they're going to end up. Um, with Pokemon though, the opposite is occurring. Okay. Um, the high end collectibles in Pokemon are skyrocketing and mm -hmm. the values are continuing to increase. And, and, and again, there's, there's different correlations with, with both. Um, you know, I think with magic, um, I don't want to say some of the numbers were propped up, but there were more, there was more of an interest. And because those high end items are, are so expensive at this point, there aren't, um, there aren't buyers in the market that are willing to invest that large amount of money. So because, you know, it's common, just supply and demand, right? Mm -hmm. um, because the demand's down, you know, uh, the, the, the prices are going to follow. Now with Pokemon adversely, I think that the high end collectible market in that area I think that those valuables are underpriced, right? They're undervalued. And what's occurring is what it had, what it occurred with magic, you know, some years ago where people are like, Oh man, you know, I have disposable income now. I want to collect those things that I collected, you know, when I was a kid. So, you know, those prices are continuing to increase because the demand, the, the demand is going up. And also I, again, like I said, I feel that those pro those items were, were undervalued, right? They were, they were just too cheap. Yeah. So, I think uh, um, for our listeners, if, if, you, if you don't like the words magic and Pokemon, Paul, couldn't you replace this with stocks like uh, trending stocks in e either direction, right? It's just another, not, not so much a commodity, but it's just another thing that people buy. Paul, what do you think? So, James, maybe you both can answer this. I want to get your thoughts is, you know, Paul, we talked about why businesses are going to go under during this time. So, James, and let, what, what do, first of all, are you, do, are you seeing peers? Are, are those new tattoos on your hands? Yeah, uh, yeah. Paul, you were going to get that that right hand. Paul was very interested in that, that right hand. Oh, look at that. Oh, Paul. Yeah, it's, it's the king and queen of hearts. Wow, look at that. Anyway, um, yeah. that, that distracted me. James, do you have friends in the business who are going under? Not, not yet. Uh, I mean, they are struggling. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and this, this point kind of goes... What did you sorry, say, Paul? What did you say? Why are they struggling? If uh, I mean, are they not online enough? What's the reason? Uh, co combination of things. I, to be honest, for me, and and I'm, I don't like talking myself up, but like, I work harder than most people, right? Everybody doesn't have my game plan as well, so they're not necessarily employing the strategies that I'm that I'm employing, you know, to to run my business. So everyone may not have ran, you know listed their back stock. Everybody may have not ran a sale you know, to put themselves in line with, with the market from a pricing standpoint. So there's, there's just things that I'm doing 
that other people aren't doing. I'm working six or seven days a week. Other people may not be working six or seven days a week. Like, so. Two uh, questions. How are you getting more inventory? I remember you telling me before you got inventory from going to shows. Yes. Yes. They so we, right now. great, great question. So, and, and, and again, all of, all of this is really just work towards our, our strengths of what we set up and what we were doing prior to this. And we're just focusing more on what we were doing already. So that's why it's been such an easy transition for us. But, uh, and I think I mentioned this before, but Andrew Mahone has uh, a streaming channel that, you know, uh, support supports us. Right. So, um, he speaks to his listeners and we actually get a lot, we get a lot of cards in the mail right, from our direct website. So we get a lot of Pokemon cards that are actually just directly, you know, mailed right, right, right to the shop. So we're, we're able to, um, you know, list that inventory from that. Now, the other thing is too, prior to this happening, I had about a, go ahead. What was this channel on YouTube again? Tr is Tricky Jim. Tricky Jim. Jim. Uh, yep. Tricky. Yep. Jim. J-Y-M. G-Y-M or G-Y-M? Uh, G-Y-M. All right. All right, cool. He's up 2000. Oh, yes. And then the other thing, the other thing was too, we kind of locked out. Uh, I had been hitting shows consecutively um, prior, prior to, you know, all the shutdowns and things like that. And honestly, I had like a month and a half to two months worth of, worth of work already backed up. So I, 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 we've been, you know, sit, I've been sitting around, you know, working on the inventory that, you know, I just had laying around that I needed to work anyways. And I've just been playing catch up and getting everything listed that, that I had already stockpiled that I needed to work prior, prior to this happening. So I've been sitting on a, on a mound of inventory. The second question, I know you did a discount. How is yep. your profit in the last month? How is the profit in the last month? It's, it's good. It's good. I mean, and maybe this is a wrong mind. Maybe this is a wrong mindset. But my my mindset is at at this point with the amount of inventory that I've accumulated. Okay, um, it's more it's more than I've invested. All right. So I go in with a mindset right now that I may not profit what I need to profit in a nor in a normal circumstance to continue to grow. Okay, um, and I may take a loss on certain items. Um, but if I'm able to liquefy myself, you know, and, and get that capital, I'm not, I'm not as concerned about margin right now as I, as I typically would be in a, in a normal circumstance. So Paul, I know that's not think, a Paul, what do you think about that, answer? that mindset? No, I, I mean, but, listen, there's no right or wrong answer. I think it makes sense though. It's like, Hey, listen, we're in a tough time now. I want to keep the lights on and get my cash. Yep. And yep. yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's, it's not going to be a, it's, it's a temporary thing. It's not, you know, forever here. Paul, talk about, uh, Jameson men mentioned work ethic. Talk about, I know when people bring up the idea of work ethic, I, I'm surprised you didn't chime in because you have your thoughts about it. But like when someone can recognize that they're obviously outworking, quote unquote, outworking their opponents or competitive opponents, competitors, like, you know, you have thoughts about that. What, but Paul, talk about like, you know, the idea of work ethic and, and when, you know, because a lot of people say they work hard, but you always say, well, what does that mean? I mean, talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I always... It's the whole thing about like, I'm busy or I work hard. I don't know what that means because I, I you know, I don't, and by the way, James, it's not, it's not a knock on you. It's just, yeah. you know, like you said, you out hustle your, your, your friends. We feel like we are willing to out hustle people on evaluating real estate deal. I mean, there's it, always a, an a point where you sit there and say, what is, what is the harder work? I don't know. I mean, if it's just sitting at your desk doing work, Sure, fine, great. I don't know what that entails, and we don't know Jameson, his, your business well enough to sit there and say, okay, I know what that means. So maybe you can elaborate on that. Yeah, it's kind of cliche for me, but like I always go back to the Rocky movies, and like my my mantra or my mindset is, you know, there is no tomorrow, right? What do I have in front of me that I could be doing today, you know, that I don't want to put off until tomorrow? I mean, I keep lists on my desk of things that I need to do. I mean, I literally write down, you know, all of the things that need done. And then as I do them, I check them off and then I just go to the next thing. I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't think, oh, well, I got this done today. So I'm good. No, no, I write that list and I just, I just keep going down, you know, and I, I don't want to deviate too much, but like, I got lucky too. I got lucky that, you know, in November I had applied for a business loan, right, for 
to get additional capital for the business to continue for it to continue to grow. And, uh, you know, with everything going on, I kind of, I kind of wrote it off. Well, a couple Mondays ago, I got an email that I got approved for another $200,000 worth of capital. Well, in between that, right. I had, uh, my, my landlord had contacted me and we had talked for a couple of years off and on, right. Uh, about me buying the building. Well, in December, he actually contacted me and gave me, you know, the opportunity in a, in a real offer. Well, in between when I applied for that business loan, I then applied to buy the building. And th- about three weeks ago, I got approved to buy the building, you know, a $600,000 building. I have six other, seven other tenants, right? Well, in, in along with that, you know, um, the loan officer I'm working with also wanted to consolidate a majority of my business debt. They gave me another hundred thousand dollars to consolidate that. They dropped my payments by five or six thousand dollars a month, right? And then they also gave me another fifty thousand dollar line of credit, right? So I've also not only am I, you know, have this list of these things I'm checking off. I'm also doing all of these other things in between that is setting us up for success and setting us up for growth and, you know, what I mean, just advancing our position in, in every avenue pa- possible. How did you consolidate your debt to save five or six thousand a month at a hundred thousand dollars in debt that's a great question so <clears throat> chase gave me chase gave me one hundred and ten thousand dollars about a year and a half ago well it was a cash flow loan right and it was it was a quick repayment what well, I, I pay them eleven eleven hundred and fifty dollars a week right and then i just had a couple other business loans too you know that i pay uh, a combination of like a thousand dollars a month on you know, somewhere in there, where where my monthly payment with this new consolidation loan is only seventeen hundred dollars a month, right? So, yeah, it was just an aggressive. The the one loan was just a real aggressive pay 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 down. So it really just dropped my dropped my payments by like like five or six thousand dollars, some right. somewhere around there. But it's just really what are you what are you doing as a business owner to really set yourself up for success or growth? If that's what you want. Now, if that's not what you want, I totally get it. You know what I mean? You don't have to do these things that are going to, you know, push you because a lot of times it's, it's stressful. It's a lot to manage. It's a lot to juggle, but I'm, re- I'm really doing as much as I possibly can in addition to my normal work day to really put us in a position to cat, to capitalize on, you know, opportunities that, that make sense for us, you know, with buying the building. Now I'm going to have room to grow, right. The, the actual physical business, I'm going to have more warehouse space. I'm going to possibly have more retail space, right. It just, it just makes sense. And then, by having tenants in the building too, they're pretty much going to pay for the mortgage for me. Like, you know, it's just a no brainer. Now I don't have to pay rent. So it's going to lower my cost in that regards. You know, there's just a lot of, you know, opportunities that present itself just by doing that. And it's outside of the box. It's not really, you know, part of my normal everyday, you know, regimen of what I should be doing to, to focus on my core, my core business. Paul, when you hear, Uh, Paul, when you hear about all the craziness, like when I hear this, I'm like, that, that's a lot more going on than my simple business. How do you, Paul, how do you do it with like 12 to 15 businesses? What, I mean, like, how do you not go freaking bonkers? I have good people. Do you have people, Jameson, that you, is it all you or do you need people? I mean, what? <laughs> no, man, I, it's, I have a team. I mean, we, I have 10 employees and, you know, every, everyone's bought in, you know, um, and, I, and I appreciate them. And I, and I let them know that on a consistent basis. You know, and I think that's really important, especially right now, too, because, you know, with so so much at stake, so much going on, like I just, you know, let them know how much I appreciate them and how good of a job, you know, that, that everybody's doing. But no, I have, I have a team of all stars, man. We absolutely kill it. So oh, what were you saying? Lay anybody off? You get to, get to lay anybody off? Jameson? No, Mm-mm. no, I'm paying everybody. Yep. Everyone's getting paid. I mean, that's incredible. Mitch, um, <clears throat> yep. You know, Paul, I called Jameson yesterday. He was in, um, he was in Michigan buying a magic collection. Um, a lot of the, <laughs> so like part of this is you have to like scan Craigslist. You have to scan Facebook marketplace, go find people who are, so what are you seeing in the community? Again, if you, if you don't want to call it magic, card, if you're listening and don't like magic cards, call it or whatever the hell you want. What are you seeing? What kind of desperation are you seeing out of normal people to dump collections? Like, what are you seeing out there? Not a, not a lot yet. Not a, not a lot yet, to be honest. I mean, if you scour it more, you you may find it. And to be honest, I haven't been, I haven't been, excuse me, I haven't been searching a ton, ton, because I've been saving the capital that I have because 
I'm about to close on this building and I'm about to have to write a hundred thousand dollar check. So yeah, once, <laughs> once I write that check, I'm going to have a, uh, because it may, it, we're just getting the appraisal back and everything like that. So that amount may, may change. So I'm waiting to, you know, really deploy additional capital and buying inventory until, you know, until that's, until that's closed. But I haven't, I haven't seen a lot of desperation yet. Um, but I, I can imagine that, you know, there, there is some out there. Paul, what do you think about his move to buy his building and um, get some tenants kind of open up his business that way? What do you think of that? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen the numbers or anything like that. So who knows what's going on? It's just, uh, I mean, if it, if it makes sense to you, you need space. I mean, there's, there's so many different ways to calculate it. Like, you know, for our building stuff, we bought the entire building. It was funny. We were joking yesterday or two days ago, we had our meeting with our consultant. We were talking about our office building. And I said, uh, basically our costs to rent our costs and our mortgage tax insurance operating costs on just our space is lower than the rent I would have paid elsewhere. And I have the rest of the building that's rented out. So it's like, for us, I don't care about the value. For me, it doesn't make sense, but I don't care about the value because to me, I'd either be paying 15 or 20 dollars per foot, or I'm paying nine dollars per foot with mortgage tax insurance and everything to run my space. So it's like, I win either way. That's the way I look at it for ourselves because we plan on being here a while, but it, it all depends on everybody's difference and all that stuff. I mean, are the tenants paying on time right now, uh, uh, Jameson? I mean, with this economy, because I know our commercial tenants, we've had some issues with we have to talk to them about. That's a good question. And I don't, I, and I don't know uh, because I, I didn't, I didn't ask my landlord that question. I did, might I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, what are you seeing? Uh, you know, we've had a couple of tenants reach out to us that have issues and you know, everybody's going to pay us. We've already gotten on payment plans for the people who can't. Our, our apartment rents are down significantly, but enough where we think it's going to be temporary, especially with the new owner unemployment benefits. Basically our tenant base for our renters, they're going to make more money in unemployment than they're making at their job. So they're either going to have a job and honor their commitment or get unemployment and make more money and honor their commitment. And, and the funny part is the only thing I'm worried about is the backlash publicly of people saying, I can't believe they're making people pay their rent. I'm like, well, they're making more money now than they were before. So yes, I'm going to make them pay their rent. That is the deal. Like they, they, the money's there for them to pay their bills and, and live their life. And that involves rent. So I would talk to your landlord and say, hey, what's the current situation? And ask him to show it to you. It's a good point. Because you don't want to walk in there and you find out that every tenant is three months behind schedule. You know what I mean? And that rent right. that's supposed to be coming in isn't coming in. I can very well, like what kind of tenants are in there? Like what kind of businesses? Mm, there's a furniture store, uh, a restaurant, a hair salon, a tattoo place, and a bar. Wow. So restaurant and bar are not generating any income right now. I guarantee you they're not paying anything. Right. Um, salon shut down. They're not generating income. So everybody there is like a furniture store. Nobody, I mean, yeah, I, would, I, I just had, a, I had, I ordered a lot of furniture. The, the company refused to, to deliver it. So I would definitely go to him and say, hey, what's going on about this COVID? Like, we need to talk about that. Right. Paul, oh, what do you think about uh, De uh, Governor DeWine and Trump both coming out and saying we're going to start reopening by May 1st? What do you think about that? I, I, I don't know. You know me, I thought the whole shutdown was probably more than it should have been anyhow. So they want to they open back up, great. If not, great. I mean, we'll just figure it out along the way. I mean, I've told you a thousand times, I think the reaction we did was way over the top. Yeah, I was talking to uh, uh, your partner, Andrew. Obviously, Andrew's been on the podcast a zillion times on the Learn From a Show. And uh, he was saying, you know, at some point, you have to start putting a dollar amount on how much money you're going to spend to save a life. You know, well, can I talk about that for a second? Do you want to hear those numbers? Go ahead. So I want everybody to understand, when I'm giving these numbers, I'm not saying a human life is worth X. Because clearly, if I could save one of my family members' lives, I'd spend a lot of money doing it. But let's say GDP drops 40% like they're estimating in the second quarter. That's $2 trillion. How many people are going to die in the second quarter from COVID? 4,000? 4,000. Call it 40,000. That's, oh. 50, that's $50 million per life. What? Yes. $50 million a life? Let me, make, let, me, let me make sure I'm right. $2 trillion. <laughs> <laughs> by 40,000 50 million dollars per life it's not I, have a, I have a question to ask you <laughs> <laughs> what 
Do you see what I'm saying? It sounds insensitive. It is not meant to sound insensitive. It's not meant to be insensitive. However, how many people are now going to die because they don't have jobs, because they have stress, because they don't pay their bills? All these things, they can't get access to X, Y, and Z. I look at that going, are we going to lose more people? Unemployment rate right now is currently sitting at, they're saying 15% and getting worse. You tell me that's not going to cause lives. I look at it going, are we really saving as many lives as we actually think overall? And at some point, you got to sit there and say, did we do the right? And that's only one quarter. That's only one quarter. I look at it going, God, I just have a hard time. Again, I'm not trying to say a life is worth X, but at some point, we got to say that. we got to say some factor like, what if we use that $50 million for that life and put it towards saving 10,000 lives? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, how much can 50 million go towards HIV um, drugs for people who can't pay for it? Right? Yeah. I look at it going, God, it's just a hard thing to understand. And I know it sounds insensitive, but I look at it going, at the end of the day, what, what are we here to do? We're here to sit there and say, what's best for the economy as a whole? I'm not saying we should just kill people in the streets, you know, to save the economy. But I'm sitting there saying, at some point, we got to sit there and say, what is too much? Paul, what do you think uh, in terms of a business like Jameson where he's going to have to open up his doors, people come in? Like, I've heard people say, oh, boy, when this, when this opens up, people are just going to erupt and go spend a bunch of money. And I'm thinking, there's not, the money's not there for people. Like, did, I, am I wrong? From, what do you uh, think? How are we going from 3.5% employment to potentially 20% at the end of this month and tell people all of a sudden doors are going to open and floodgates are going to open? I mean, I have a hard time understanding that, too. Is it possible? Sure. Is it probable? I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's already started happening. I've already seen it started happening. And, it, and, I, and, and I didn't... What do you mean it started happening? A, so, like, for me, for me, it's already started happening. So, I don't... And there's a new Pokemon set coming out. So, we just listed the new Pokemon set a couple days ago. Okay? But that also coincided with the fact that everyone got their checks. Mm. And like I said, my, my normal sales days are somewhere in the, the three to $6,000 range. I, I typically, the tip, the, the only time I normally have like a $10,000 online sales day is like Black Friday. It's like the holidays, hmm. right? I've literally had back-to-back days of $10,000 sales days. So I, I, I think it's already started happening a little bit. Like I think well, people are stir crazy. And, it, it, and at least in my industry, I'm in the entertainment industry. So people are like, I need something to occupy my time. I need some, you know, I need something that I'm interested in. So I, I've already seen a huge flux, you know what I mean, of of spending occur just just from that in the pa- in the past two days. So I, I mean I don't know if that's relevant to what you're talking about, but no, it, it's a factor. But we look at it saying bars, restaurants, they employ three million people. Yeah, uh, those three million people are going to all of a sudden get their jobs back because the floodgates. Open. How many bars and restaurants shut down? And all of a sudden, you can't you can't just open them back up like that. You know what I mean? It's just there's gonna be, You're talking, yeah. I'm talking about, yeah, I'm talking about, remember. General, like, yes. Like, can, the whole, yes, like, correct. We're going from I'm, employment to potentially 20%. That doesn't go back to 3% overnight. That takes time. Right, right. And I, and I guess I was just talking more specific industry to me. To me. I'm, oh, I'm already yeah. seeing it. Let me, let me just show you guys something real quick. If I can share my screen at some point. Uh, keep talking, Seth, and I'll show it to you when it pops up. Well, you know, like, you know, Paul and I and, and some of our stock buddies, um, we've had Mo on the podcast in the past analyzing stocks. And I've been asking Paul, I have uh, quite a bit amount of money I need to invest. Uh, I took my money out, a lot of my savings out in uh, my retirement out to cash about six months ago while the rest of the world was gaining. So I've been looking for the, obviously finding the right time to jump back in. And James, and it sounds like what you're saying, and I was telling Paul just yesterday, it seems like there's light at the end of the tunnel. People, I mean, it, you know, the, 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 the death rate or the, the amount of people dying is, is, is going down in some states. They're talking about reopening. So you know, have we bottomed out? I feel like the sun started coming out here in Ohio, although now it's snowing today. So, but I mean, like, I, I felt like we're on, we're on the upswing here. So when is the right time to invest? Um, yeah, I was asking Paul and, um, and, and Paul's still been very adamant that when the GDP numbers come out, people are going to freak out and everything's going to tank again. But I'm just wondering, is that really, I guess, Paul, I'm wondering, is that going to happen? I don't mean to change the subject, but. Um, Let me I'm, show you this. Let me show you this. Go ahead. So here's the unemployment from the last recession we had. In, in January, in November, no, sorry, in December, it was 
December of 07. So January of 08 or whatever, it was 5%. It peaked in October of 09 at 10%. So it took a little bit of time, but you see this pretty fast growth from 5% in April of 08. In, in one year, it went up from 5% to 9.4. Now look how long it took to get back down. And this was very centrally on one, on what, why is this not loading? Do you have to hit like an enter or something? Yeah, that's what I tried doing it. So I'm gonna go F myself. Hmm. Either way, three years later, it's still not down to the normal level. And that was very concentrated in real estate and banking. Ah. So that's where I go. I don't understand how it's gonna be like that. Because, and this, and our number is gonna get from even lower than, than they started to double this potentially. I look at that going, I have a hard time. Now, that doesn't mean that businesses like Jameson's won't do well. Not every business is gonna do poorly. Look at Zoom. Has anybody in this country used Zoom? Now we use it literally eight times a day. <laughs> right. Yeah. right? So I look at this saying, okay, there will be issues with a lot of the country and this whole idea of a V-shaped recovery, it'll happen for a lot of businesses, maybe for Jameson. Our apartments, we think our collections, FYI, in Columbus, on February 15th, on March 1st, we had 48 vacants, 10%. We now have 20 vacants. We've leased during this time. We've gone from 10% vacant to 4% vacant. How? I don't know, but we think we're gonna have a very quick recovery of revenue. It'll be harder to get back to our peak, but we'll get it eventually. But, but we're seeing, we do think our revenue is gonna go from here to here, and that could to like, here and climb back from there. So it's gonna happen. And hopefully Jameson did a smart thing by did we discounted our rents too. You guys discounted your um, your 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 prices and hopefully it helps you guys. So same thing, but I don't think the whole general consensus of the economy is this V-shaped recovery. I just don't understand how that happens. Jameson, in terms of growth with your business, these big trading card places like uh, I, don't, I don't hear. Oh, you can't hear me? Jameson, can you hear me? You guys, Jameson, do you guys hear? We yeah, can I'm good. hear Paul. Check your, check your uh, speakers. Great. Um, Jameson, I don't want to name these big, these big places, but we, we, you and I both know there's some really large um, trading card, collector card places. Like, um, what kind of revenue do they do? How many people do they employ? I don't, obviously, I don't think your business is on that same level at the moment, wouldn't you agree? But I, I wish. Would you want to get to that? Well, you say you wish. That's a great, that's a great way to say it because most people, m most people here would wish for up here, but I'm wondering what comes with that. You, maybe you don't know or can't say, but like how many people are they, these big places employing and how, how much revenue do you think they're doing? Uh, they're probably employing somewhere around 150 to 200 people probably. Um, the revenue is probably like the larger, larger companies. 15, 20 million, somewhere, somewhere in that range. Do you think you could do that one day? Good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm just building the infrastructure now. So my, my goal was to hit 2 million this year and I'm, I'm still on pace to hit like 1.8 or 2 million in sales. And then from there, I want to jump, I want to jump to three, three to five. And then once I hit, you know, somewhere in three to five, then, you know, it'll be seven to eight and then, you know, on, on upward. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's awesome. It's just going to take time. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. Imagine, imagine the gathering of Pokemon cards and whatever it's to it, $20 million a year in revenue. Yep. I mean, it's a billion dollar industry, so the money's out there. You know what I mean? You just well, have bigger to. Bigger than a million dollar industry. Bigger What's than that? a billion, you think? I mean, it seems, I mean, if, if we, if you guys know several stores here in Ohio that do 15 or 20 million. No, 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 not, not Ohio. No, no, not in Ohio. Oh, hmm. I'm sorry. All around the States. Yeah, this would probably be, what do you say, James? Maybe five to eight stores that are like that, maybe? Maybe, yep. Yeah. Maybe. And it's a lot of hustle. I mean, you're having, you know. <laughs> the well, one, you need a hustle to make, uh, to make that kind of money. Well, Paul, but yep. like, I, I, Paul, I, I don't think someone like you is going to sit at a table at a tournament of a bunch of smelly nerds and, uh, and argue. Chess. They're not all smelly. Well. I play chess. Have you ever been to a chess tournament, Seth? Yeah, but this, but Jameson has to sit at a table and literally have like a seventh grade kid argue with him about whether five dollars <laughs> or three dollars. Like, it's 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 like some of them are some small transactions that you really gotta 
work hard at. You know, Jameson, one of the things – I've always been in love with the game, but I noticed, like, for 10 years straight – I was seeing like the same kind of dreary looking guys sitting behind the table of some of these companies and like realizing like, I don't know if I want my life, not that I ever thought about it, you know, but I mean, I didn't know if I want my life. Do do you see that? Like you see the same people going through the same motions every year after year, kind of rotting behind that table, like talking to, you know, talking to to high school kids. Um, Like, you know, does that worry you at all? (laughs) No, they're usually not high school kids. It's It's mainly, you know, people of the same the same age bracket but no they're they're enjoying themselves and like for for my industry too I feel good because I give a place to people that don't normally feel comfortable in other type of social social situations so it, it you know it's nice to be able to provide that space you know for those people cuz like I said they they usually don't fit in anywhere else so they fit in here you know what i mean yeah for sure so, you know i i totally know what you're talking about not you say it providing like a little community it's funny uh, james yeah. and Paul and I are incredibly dear friends. We spend many nights together. We go on vacations together, but we, we tend to see ourselves like in the same environments. And so I told this story in the podcast. Yeah. Before. Like, we play tennis together and I saw Paul at a tennis match at our local tennis. And we both agreed the day after how awkward it was to see each other in like a weird <laughs> situation. It's like, dude, I love you to death, but wasn't that weird seeing both of us dressed as tennis people? So um, yeah, Paul, I mean, Paul, you sure. Oh, you, you say in chess, I mean, I'm sure that same community kind of exists, right? Kind of kids who aren't really accepted in other places. Like they kind of default, maybe default to chess or magic. Like I think the weirder people are the adults that do the chess. Like the, uh, the kids are just being kids. It's the adults. I'm like, that's a strange person right there. <laughs> now, listen, I'm not trying to be a jerk about it. You're, it's not, just, you're, you're not wrong. No, yeah, you're it's not wrong. Just, uh, yeah. Like, it's, it's it's funny, Seth. When I was in high school, I never thought I'd ever be in rooms where I'm the coolest guy there. And now I'm like, uh, I, you know, I'm sitting here in a chess room going. <laughs> and, like, literally, you can't have a conversation because they'll get angry with you if you hold them to a time commitment. You know what I mean? It's like, well, the match is supposed to start five minutes ago. Can I have a drink? Uh, okay, relax. It was mm-hmm. a- well, You know, when you get into these niche communities, like I'm sure like chess and especially magic, um, like, you know, Paul, like I had a probably like a couple hundred thousand dollar collection. You know, I had cards I'd sold for eight, nine, ten thousand dollars. And so when I went to these large tournaments, like I was the cock of the walk, but then you just step right outside and no one gives a flying shit about you at all. It's like, it's like, so I know a lot of people. They love the feeling of walking into like a big magic tournament and thinking like they're all, you know, the greatest thing ever. But in real life, you know, you're, you're uh, just a normal person like everyone else. But um, yeah, that's funny. So yeah, Look James. Jameson. Jameson looks like the kind of guy, he looks like a white rapper. You know what I mean? He looks like a guy who should be like in Miami, like his hat says, you know, yes. making a studio in South Beach. And if, you, if I met him and he, I go, what do you do for a living? Well, I, I own a Pokemon and Magic Gathering store. I would probably laugh and say, no, really, what do you do for a living? Like, no, that's really what right. I do. Like, Oh, yep. really? Like, you know, it's not yeah. the normal thing of like what I expect to see. Mm-hmm. From Remember, it was Louis Vuitton glasses and uh, and the let's let's see the glasses. Where are they? He's got the where whole. Where are they at? He's, he's he seven hundred dollar glasses. Oh. Why are you saying where are they at? Now is that a is that a pet snake or something behind you? Oh, here they are. Look at these. I got beardies, bearded dragons. There's those, and then there's a pair of Gucci's that are just chilling on the desk too. They, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Funny in a thing. Look at them go, dude. I just bought a pair of Louis sandals. Oh my god, they're so dope, so dope! I can't wait for him to get. <laughs> I asked you how much they were. Six hundred and twenty-five dollars for a pair of sandals. For six, six sixty actually. Six sixty after tax. That's a big ball. Oh, this magic. They're, tra- they're translucent. They're like uh, pink and blue. They match my hat. It's it's great. Where are they? In my car. In my car. They're. I just ordered them, so they got to mail them to me. Oh, oh, okay. So you just ordered them. Yeah. Oh, now, Paul, yeah. weren't you yeah. saying you, you love Louis stock, uh, Louis Vuitton? No, I, 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 I shouldn't say the stock. So far, the company's financials are really intriguing to me. Yeah, interesting. Well, all right, guys. Um, <clears throat> I'm certain we can wrap up. You guys have been awesome today. This was a great show. Um, Jameson, Paul- I'm really glad things are going great. That's awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate the sport, and I really appreciate you guys having me on again. It's, a, it's always a pleasure to see you guys. Now, I'll have to be around Jameson soon to see all these new cards. Uh, I have to be a little careful with my money, but you know me. I definitely come in and um, buy these stupid cards. So. I, I got a couple things for you. So. Oh, great. Perfect. Yeah, Jameson, have you ever, <laughs> yeah. ever – like we talked before, do you know what, like, what people in your – if your people, your customers at your store play chess? No, I don't. 
No, I don't. You should find that. I don't know if you should find I, yeah, I think I asked you this. I don't know if I asked you this last time. Have you ever thought about getting into baseball cards or no? You're not, you're not really interested in that. I used to collect them as a kid. And I kind of follow, follow Gary Vee a little bit too. I, I don't know yeah, if you like him or not. But he's oh, huge into him. that. Is okay, he really? Yeah, he's, he's huge into sports cards. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, you should really d- dive into it. Huge into it. And it just takes, it takes up a lot of space. You know what I mean? It's just a whole different industry. You have to learn it. You know what I mean? And like the people that I have working for me were really geared towards what we're doing already. So I don't really want to dilute what we're doing. So I want to try to, you know, keep our focus on the, on the two games and board games. That's, that's the third thing, but that's, that's about it. Paul, are you into board games? We love board games at our house. Uh, I'm not into board games. I, um, if you'll see behind me when I stop sharing this video, um, how do I stop the video? No, I can't do that. Cheers. No, what the heck? Oh, I can do that. Choose virtual background. None. All right, you see behind me? There's a yeah. chess set right there. Yes. The problem right with chess sets is they're beautiful, but they take up a lot of space. Right. So before, I remember thinking to myself, like, oh, I'll collect chess sets. And I started to realize how much space they take up. I'm like, no, I'm not collecting chess sets. This is like a terrible idea because they just take <laughs> up too much space. That's like comic books or like video games for me. I don't get into that industry because like it takes up a lot of space and we're already busting at the seams with all the Pokemon and magic cards that we have already. So yeah, maybe in the future, maybe in the They're future. Beautiful. But the thing about chess sets is I go, to, I go to somebody's house and see a chess set. I'm like, oh, you guys play chess? No, it's art. I'm like, okay, I got it. it makes sense. You know what I mean? It's like mm. they do it for decoration. So yeah. that's the benefit right. of chess sets though. You can really, you're not putting a game of life on your countertop saying, oh, look, it's decoration. But chess... Oh, that's a beautiful set over there. That thing's heavy. Jameson, tell right. the folks how they can find you and, and buy, buy a product from you. Great question. Fullgripgames.com. Uh, you can go directly to the website and, uh, yep, purchase anything that we, that we have uh, in the store. Great. Paul, let's have Jameson on again when he's killing it, making uh, five million bucks a year. And um, I'll be down to um, I'll stupidly blow my money on cards very soon. Oh, I remember, I'm supposed to go with you sometime, Seth. So let's plan this. We'll do a lunch. We'll be do great. A- head down there. So. <laughs> That'd be great. All right, uh, be great to see you guys. Thanks for coming on, Jameson. As always, we'll have you on again. Thank uh, you again. Follow us and learn from us. Uh, so if you're listening online, um, you can see our handsome faces on YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and tell your friends. We got to get our listenership up to um, three billion by the end of the year, Paul. So um, we're gonna get there. So. Like and subscribe. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Jameson. Talk to you guys soon. Learn from us, guys. Thanks.